is Goldie, and this is Great People to Know. And today we are interviewing Larry Jackson. And Larry Jackson is going to give some information. He is very instrumental in our uh, community because he does um, mental health. He uh, He's trying to get out, you know, bring us together. So we're going to do a lot of stuff. So as I'm sharing this link, I want Larry to introduce himself and tell you all, tell everybody about you and who you are and what you do. Cool beans. Uh, yeah, thank, thank you for inviting me to this. I, I think it's a great way to uh, connect. Uh, you hear some noise in the background. It's my baby daughter. So, uh, hey, you know, hey, congratulations. Active. Thank you. She's active and involved. Um, so my name is Larry Jackson. Um, I, uh, I, 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 I've got probably about a, roughly about a 10, 10, 10, 12 history, at least with, with the view. So I've, I've, I've been in that area for quite some time. Um, you, 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 you know, I've, I've been doing, I've been, I've been, I've been reaching out. I, I love, I love doing, I, I used to love, I still do, but I just don't do it anymore. I used uh -huh. to really love doing community events. Uh, um, so I, and I, 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 I did a lot of community events and I, and I participated in a lot of community events under the, under the branding of J4BG family. And so, okay. um, so a, a, if, if you look at anything that I'm doing, whether it be real estate, whether it be anything, I'm always attached to J4BG and then whatever it is, J4BG family counseling, J4BG property. You'll, you'll see, you'll see everything that I do because that's sort of my, I call it my family crest. It's a crest mm -hmm. that I created for myself that identifies an, an extension of my arm. So, um, so I'm, I, I do, I do mental health. I do, I do real estate. And if you catch, you catch, you catch me on a good day, I might even do some landscaping, which is one of my favorite side things or favorite side things to do when I have time, uh -huh. which is a bit, which is a bit scarce right now. But um, yeah, man, I, you know, I, I, lo I love entrepreneurship. I love hustle. I love community. I come from that background. My father uh -huh. was a pastor entrepreneur in Madison. He's a real estate person, business person. And I, I pretty much bred from the same cloth. So, um, so yeah, uh, uh, do primarily, uh, mental health, my full-time gig. Uh, like I said, I did one dabble in, in real estate. I, I've, I've been studying it actively probably for the last five, six years. So that's a little bit about me. Okay. Well, I want to know more about your family crest because a lot of people, don't know what that means because if you look at the old English and and look at other things in history, people don't know about that. So what's the family crest? Tell us, no, tell us about it. Yeah, uh, good question. I'm I'm, I'm going to explain this loosely. It's not going to be accurate. So <laughs> a, fa a family a fam a family crest is is is, is probably an age is age old you know concept or or symbol some type of symbol representing the family name. Um, a lot of people in the modern era probably don't have a family crest, but that, 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 that's how I identify because I want to pass on my, my branding, J4BG, J4BG, that branding it, for me is a legacy piece. It's something that I want to, it's something that I want to pass on to my kids, whether it be through under, under the function of my real estate or whether it be through, if they decide to pursue counseling, I, I, I am my, the, the reason why I sort of identified as a family crest as in, as in a symbol that represents that that represents the family in some type of way, mm -hmm. uh, a family system in some type of way is because I I believe in legacy, I believe in inher inheritance, I believe in passing down things to, to my kids, mm -hmm. and so I'm huge on that. Um, you know, some of the things you, you'll you'll see my kids do entrepreneurial stuff. Like my kids had a candy shop a long time ago. I don't know if the people are familiar with that. I remember now, that. I was, yeah, I, I would just be trying to teach them about money. That that was me leveraging my resources. In my in my in my finances to teach them actively about money, um, but uh, so 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 it, it comes it comes from that it comes from that energy, that you know, uh, you know that, that 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 so that branding means more to me than than just the symbol itself. Um, mm -hmm. Now a, a crest is usually a crest usually comes in the form of a symbol, not necessarily letters. So my what I, what I identify is it's not my my J four BG is not necessarily a <laughs> not necessarily a it's not necessarily a crest. It, it, I, I made it. A, I, I'm making it. My, my logo is my crest. I put it like that. Um, I, so. You know what? This is what I love about cre creativity. Your crest is whatever you make it. It can be numbers, letters, whatever. You That's made true. it. It's an establishment of your family name. Yeah. Point well taken. Yeah. Yep, yep. You're right. 
It's a it's an establishment of your family's name. You know, it's just this people don't understand the weight of carrying your your family's name. It's not weight. It's a blessing. So you know you representing your family. Right. This is that holds a lot of, you know, this that should make you feel good. Like this is my family I'm representing. You know, this is my family I'm representing. So I am so um this is that I love that. I love that. So tell everybody when you came up with that concept, you know, you said you want to do it with your family. Is it just is it your businesses is how you connected that? Yeah, it's, it, it's interesting. It, you know, I, I, it, it didn't intentionally. It didn't. It didn't initially start like that. So it initially okay. started. I started doing. You know, a lot of. You know, first it started through my church. I, I, started, I did a. I did a church group group where I was mentoring young men, and I okay. we called it Just for Boys. Oh. Um, and it, and I would, and, it, and and you know, every once a week I would have young, young boys just come to my house. And they, we would just kick it. You know, pizza, video games, and and you know, and, and ev- eventually I said, man, I don't want to just do nothing with these kids. So I start build, building, adding structure to it. I have a guidance counseling background, so my so my my extended credentials are in mental health, but my base education is in guidance counseling. So I created a whole guidance counseling curriculum to educate and reinforce characters uh, character sets like leadership, communication. Uh, there was there was one other thing that was, that was the primary uh, uh, pinnacle piece of, of of my curriculum. But I, I designed a whole curriculum, you know, from scratch. Um, and then, and then I, you know, I created something that kids could follow up on and track their own progress. It was really interesting. When I look at some of my past work, I, you know, I, I look at some of my paperwork probably about a couple of months ago. I'm like, geez, I did all that. I, I, spent a, <laughs> I, spent, I spent tons of time, you know, putting in effort, doing research on leadership. I, I just did a ton of stuff. I, I my energy, that. my energy, my focus was there. So it started out as just for boys. Um, and it evolved into it evolved and in, evolved into getting sponsorships from church groups. So I went out and, you know, I, I went out from my space and, and I, I found a church. No, I found actually a, 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 a Scott Potter. Scott Potter, okay. most people don't know him. Scott Potter passed away probably about five years ago. And oh, I'm still okay. really close to his son. The owner of the Davis Place, which is sort of a, a single residency for um, veterans, men, but primarily okay. men. They right downtown. One of my favorite guys, Scott Potter, was the first person to sponsor me. We were okay. doing, we were do, he allowed me to do youth groups in their basement. Um, and it started out that way, ended up getting uh, extended. I did, and then I ended up moving into a church, Emmanuel Congregational United, that's right down the street mm-hmm. in the area. I was able to partner with them. And then we, mm-hmm. did, we did, I did J4BG Family Nights every Monday night, for like about six years straight, um, four years straight almost at Emmanuel Congregation United, where they supported their church, provided food, you know, you know, my, the, the events were always potluck, and so it it it, it sort of evolved. It, it just evolved, and I and I kept I kept the branding. So it started from just for boys, and then when I started doing the church thing, the people were like, "Well, girls and the girls need mentorship and all this kind of stuff." I'm like, "All right, just for boys, and I got just for girls." And right. so the symbols the symbols just for boys, just for girls comes from a collabor a a, a, a uh, the combination of just for boys J four B and just uh-huh. for girls J four G. Okay. So J four BG, just for boy for boys and girls. Okay. So that's the that's the origins of the name. Mm-hmm. Um, as I as you know, I, for me community community involvement and community it, doing things in the community is a form of artistic expression to me. It is putting our stamp on the universe. So I've, I've always considered I've always considered everything that I've done through J four BG an artistic expression and an entrepreneurial effort too, because non for profit effort, not for profit energy is very entrepreneurial. You're trying to you try to build a machine and have it sustain itself essentially. Um so I did I did a whole bunch of stuff. We did we started out doing day four BG water balloon fights. We had water balloons for water balloon fights. I did water balloon fights for two years. Family oh nights. Gosh. We did family nights. We did, I did a ton of stuff also through the active involvement of other individuals. Like like uh Howard Lee was one of one of my one of um in my latter year in the latter years of J4 BG Okay. <laughs> was, a, was, a, was a primary helper. There's, there's some other there's some other people that play pinnacle pieces and just helping launch launch things. J4BG Family Nights, um, the J- Poetry Project, which which a lot of people were involved in. You know, and you know, it's hit or miss. It's entrepreneurial, and that's the yeah. that's the, that's the thing. I, you know, for me, I'm fearless when it comes to doing things, and I love mm-hmm. doing things that people say I can't do. And one of the things that I did a while back ago that somebody said, "Oh, you can't do that. That's impossible. You got to take all that." I did a beautification project. Where, where we we reached out to women. So, but it's all artistic. It's art. This art, artistic entrepreneurial ex- expression that says that I exist, 
And, and to create something that was not there is something exciting that I still do in different facets. But I just chose to do it in a non-for-profit arena and mm-hmm. community-oriented arena. So uh, I took the name because I did a marching. I, I, I took the, the branding and the crest came from me getting really peeved off because somebody took credit for something that I did in the community. It was a long time oh. ago. Most, most people don't do that. I did, I did a march against violence. I, used, I did a march against violence. I, did, I think I did it at least three or four times. In the community, uh, I was, I was, you know, and um, and I partnered, I partnered with the Review Center, in which Josh Jasper was the uh, he was the CEO at the time, and he helped he helped me push it because he was the, the Riverview Center was, is the not is the nonviolent center, so he helped he helped push some things, but I did the majority of the work. I mean, I, bro- I broke my back in order to do the promo, the mm-hmm. advertising, everything, and as soon as it hit the papers, Josh Jasper got all the credit. Josh Jasper don't remember this, but. <laughs> Josh Jasper is currently the, the CEO of Resource Unite, but that's how I originally met Josh Jasper. And, uh, and I was so peeved off. I said, I am going to make sure that whatever I do, I give myself credit for it. Because Absolutely. people, particularly white folks, like to take credit for what black folks do. And that was that that that's what stood out in my mind as I was as, as I was reflecting on and why why you'll see a lot of J4BG stuff attached to a lot of things that I do. Because I just mm-hmm. think it's important to get credit for what you do, and to make I sure agree. you clap, you, you know, you clap your hands for yourself. I agree. And, uh, so I would, so I would do J4BG, and then I would call the papers every time I did something. Not that I that's needed true. credibility, but that's I didn't right. want to lose credibility. Does that makes right. sense. It's yeah, it makes perfect sense. Credibility, because you can lose it by by pretending like if you are part part of something, or you contribute to something, or you do something that sometimes that people won't automatically give you credit. And right. so if you if you if you look at I was very strategic on how I did things. I would do an event, I would call a paper, say put in a paper. Well, now when people look up my name, again, going back to the crest, going back to my family legacy, if people go back to my name, they can look me, you can look me on the line, you can look me on Telegraph Hero. They can, you can see, see you. a list of all the things that I've done that That's represents good. the Jackson or J4BG name. And I was very strategic about creating that narrative online at a very at a time where, where the internet was just popping off a little bit. But that's good. You know what? But that's part of uh, branding because people do not understand the yeah. uh, the importance of press releases and media alerts. People yeah. do not understand that because it is showing that you are, you. this is your intention. This is what I'm doing. And people don't understand mm-hmm. that. So I, I'm so glad you brought that up. And, and being in this town that we're in and, and yep. seeing that we are establishing again the presence of black black people african-american people because there's a lot of us out here doing a lot and just in the climate of things and seeing that there's a not uh, there's not a lot of resources available not saying that they're not out there they're out there we just have to know where they are because we understand systemic racism so knowing being where you are and being and coming from where you've been here for a while and doing what you're doing. What I got, would I got, you- I gotta pause here. I'm, I'm cooking right now too. Oh, so oh no, you're fine. So, you're so fine. I gotta do my due diligence. <laughs> yes, I got, yes, I got, you do. You, know, you got a new baby. Men's supposed, supposed to be cooking too. Yeah, so go ahead, keep going. So, right. so doing what you're doing, and, and, and there's a lot of other people that are doing it. So how, how important is it for us to stay uh, relevant? How is it? How can we stay relevant? How is it that? What do we need to do to actually keep bridging this gap? How do we keep the conversation going? Because I've noticed in some of the things that we do, some of us are still um, we, we we don't understand. We keep a lot of things close to us because I understand getting burned and not want to share your ideas. So what do you suggest? Just like what you said, but what else do you suggest to other people that are starting and uh, and got ideas? And you into mental mental health. So part of that is mental health because some of we're so fearful. What do you suggest to people that are new here that are trying to become entrepreneurs? What type of advice would you give them to if they're just starting out? What would you say to them? I say be fearless, be fearless, fail, 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 fail hard. That was, that, was, that, was, that was something that uh, Denzel Washington said that I thought was most connect, that most connected to me because I, you know, do, being an entrepreneur, it, 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 you're going to go through tons of failure. 
and you have to be willing. You, you're going to go through like millions. I've, I've had a million steps of failure before I could make a successful point. I mean, really, I, if, if, I was to, if I was to put it, I, at least 100,000 steps of failures in the last five years. Mm. You have to be willing, you have to be willing to hear no, you know, a thousand and one, you know, a, a, a million times. You, yeah. you have to, you have to say to yourself that when people don't believe in me, that's a good thing. Because if they, be, if they believe that, I, that what I was doing was possible, then they'd be doing it. And so entrepreneurial, entrepreneurship is, there is an element of faith. I'm a believer. And there's an element of faith that is so critical to an entrepreneur. You mm -hmm. have to believe Did it freeze up? Oh, y'all, it froze up on us. Oh, no, you fro you're freezing that, up. That, um, Can you say that again? Say that again, because you just froze up on us. Hold on a sec. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me. Okay, can you, can you, can you see? I see it's like his, um, let's see. I want to make sure I can, it's not me because it's like it's freezing up. I just want to make sure it's not me over here. Okay. Hold on. Are you okay? Hello? You, yeah, you froze. You, you're frozen. I just want to make sure. There you go. All right. You Just bear with us, y'all. We just bear with us. <laughs> right. we, yeah. So what, so what were you saying? You said uh, about faith. Um, you know, the, 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 the elements of faith, it, it, it takes... It takes the it, you have to you have to believe so hard in something that you that you force it to be. Into, I, I believe you have to believe in. I believe you have to believe in what you have to believe in what you're whatever you whatever you're involved with. You have to believe you have to you have. To, I, I, I've had to force it into existence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't mm -hmm. know about anybody else, whether mm -hmm. it be my real estate, whether it be anything. You, 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 it's just it's just the, the the entrepreneurship that goes you know as far as being an African American in a predominantly white community. You know, you have a couple of things against you. You have, you have, you have, um, you know. I hate to say this, but us, is, us is be the us is be the worst enemy. The Bible says the man's worst enemy of his own household. I believe that. So, you know, ain't number, ain't ain't about the, ain't nothing but the principle of God playing out. You know, in our lives, but you know, man's worst enemy of his own household, and sometimes our own our own people can cause us to get discouraged. That's true. Because we. We want the approval and acceptance from our own people, but them be the last for, them, them be the last people to give it to us. Sometimes, Damn. sometimes we before we can get acceptance from our own people, we have, we earn we earn respect from the white folks. I hate to say that, I hate I hate to say that, but it it, 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 it is it is so true. You know, once once other folks start getting along, they say, oh, he they are established. Don't nobody have no faith. You know, these days it is just it just is what it is. It just it, that's that's it, it, it just being black. Yeah, you know, predominantly like. And, and the other part is just, just the other part is just, it just being entrepreneurship. Nobody's supposed to believe in you. And, and the, the key to entrepreneurship is just understanding that principle that mm -hmm. nobody, not your mama, not your wife, not your kids, nobody is supposed to believe in what you are doing and what you say is possible. Because otherwise, God would have gave that message to them. <laughs> God gives True. you a message about True. what you need to do. It's about, it's about the confession of your faith, not nobody else's faith. I would, say, mm -hmm. I would say on the confession of your faith, you heal. Not, not anybody else. You know, right. and you talk about healing through entrepreneurship and creating life. It's part of the confession of your faith. And you got to believe in it so hard that other people are persuaded to believe in it. Exactly. Just like a man who is persuaded of the gospel, that is energy. And so, yes. again, going back to, you know, when you talk about what it takes, you know, what, what it takes that uh, is, is, is fail, knowing, knowing that be, um, one of the things, A, having faith to, to do, do what you can't see, but also it's just so critical to know that you're, that you are going to fail, but it's okay. You're not, you're yes. not, you're not going to make the first time. Nobody does. I'm not trying to wish, I'm not going to wish worse on nobody, but you are going to face rejection. It's not going to be right the first time. You know how long it takes to perfect something? And you think you're going to start out in one business and perfect everything? It's just impossible. <laughs> It's, it's like, like school. A thousand, a thousand steps. To yeah, it is. It, it, it's, it's like, like school. school. <laughs> and for you to be successful, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you can't expect, you, you have to, you, and you got to go, you got to go, you got to get your master's degree. And a lot of people, they're being entrepreneurs, but they're being entrepreneurs at an elementary level. They don't, they, they, they don't, they don't even know how to fail right. Right. And they, they think, they once, they that's right. 
They give That's up right. and they try something else. And then they fail, yeah. they fail to die and they give up and try something else. They don't ever stick to nothing. <laughs> it's called, what, is it, what is it? It said uh, consistency is the key to the breakthrough. A lot of people don't understand how consistency gets you to that level. And that's what school is. School is that. And it, this is nothing but another uh, another form of school. This is life school. So the things that you're doing and, and yep. everything, and people don't understand, you know, sometimes you have to do a lot of things to really strike because you do put a lot of irons you know put a lot of irons in the cold you know you put a lot of stuff out to see you know you know and and be consistent in it it's not that you're doing a whole lot of everything it's just that you are you're being very strategic in how you're doing it and it all has a common goal you're bringing people together and i think that's important and right. um and i like what you said um you know about leaving a legacy people I think when they when we start businesses, a lot of us don't understand goals. We don't go, you know, we don't set goals on what we really want to see. And like you said, you know, you, you quoted a scripture. Another one I I told someone that I pride myself on: uh, write write the vision, make it plain. Once you write it down, you're gonna keep, yep. you know, you, yep. you yep. It, it has to, you know, because it, it's your vision. It's what you were blessed to get. So being that we're in this community. And like you said, a lot of us, uh, we do not, we do not, it's hard for us to stick together. And it's a condition of the mind. So being that you are a mental health expert, let's talk about that. How many of us will even say they need help when it comes down to deciphering their mental faculties? Because a lot of us won't talk about it. Yeah, mental health is an interesting field. Um, mental health, when people come to me in general, whether it be white or black, you get you, you come to me, it is because you're at your wits end. When you talk about mental health um, at the core, you know, everybody everybody struggles with mental Everybody struggles with mental health. Not a lot of people seek out mental health. That's just across the board. It's not, a, you know, you, you as a matter of fact, you can, have, you can have a major mental health illness, but if you figure out how to adapt and survive with that illness, you, you, you don't need the support. You know, mm -hmm. mental health. Mental health is only when the symptoms, uh, not not necessarily the classification of the disorder, but when the symptoms are so severe that they cause a major dysfunction in your daily living. So the the, the, the stigma around mental health is is that something that that you automatically got a problem. No, 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 no. We all got problems. We all can get. We could all we could all use some mental health support. That that is a, that is a gimme. Um, yeah. that's a given. We all need, we, we can all benefit in, in advance in our lives socially by getting mental health support. Right. But, but really people don't only, pe really people only seek it out when it caused a major dysfunction, when they, when they almost get a divorce or when ADHD is causing, you know, academic issues or when depression is causing them, depression or anxiety is causing them to be so isolated that they are no longer functioning normally, you know, socially. You know, that's when that's when in general people come to me or when a child's behavior gets so bad that the parents at their wits end um, mm -hmm. that, that that they'll they'll bring the child they'll, they'll bring the child and you know again parents have to be at their wits end. Some people tolerate all the way till the till the kid go to jail. Um, yeah, but, which is you know unfortunately such as our such our community. But you know, so 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 there's that piece, and then yeah, and and, and then then there's the, there's the idea that that the, the, especially in our, in, our, in, the, in the black community is 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 we we are we are in a very i feel i feel and this, this is all this is larry 101 everybody's gonna have a different opinion on it yeah you, you know i'm not i'm not i'm not gonna profess i got the black opinion but i'll give you my opinion as a mental health counselor as it relates to the black community um you know back in the days historically you know the middle the the, the oracle you know the sort the oracle uh, or the uh or uh the p that got us centered emotionally and socially was the church, mm -hmm. right? When you talk about when you talk about the, the when, you, when you talk about when you talk about traveling into the civil rights era, you know, and that whole that whole piece where our connection to God is what kept us sane through those adverse times, right? Mm -hmm. um, um, but in, in some some might argue this, and I'm going to leave it at my personal opinion, but that there there's some who agree. That there's been a major disconnection between black folks, the, the current generation of black folks, and the church, and um, 
here there, there in, it lies the 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 major mental health issue in the church is that there's nobody you know you know yeah oh okay um that there's um nobody um that when now when now when we have uh, mental health crisis in the community in our, in our in our black family systems nobody there's no you know there's the isolation that there's isolation that's taking place and right. and then it explodes you know and, it, and if it's a, if it's a child then it and it's not just a it's not, it's not just black I've, I've seen it in Hispanic you know um in 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 in, in cultures where where seeing a therapist is taboo mm-hmm. you know there's some cultures that just don't believe in it right and you know and you know in my, my personal opinion and get this larry 101 mental health as far as its origins as far as its staying power as far mm-hmm. as its um as far as its even political staying power as far as our ability to charge insurance it's a it's that you know if if mental health was a black issue there's no way in the world i'd be able to sustain myself with mental health counsel because the white you know the the, right. the, the structures the structure that make it relevant is 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 my in my personal opinion, it's Larry One Hundred One. Right. Um, structures that make it relevant, though, it's only relevant because it's a white issue. Same thing. It's, it's like drugs. Like 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 we go we go through this. You know, I don't know. You know, about a couple of years ago, we, they went through this major drug epidemic. With uh, I don't know whether it's still relevant, but in Dubuque, they went through a major drug crisis with like methadone. Oh yeah. Like that. Well, yeah. Man. <laughs> well, you know, uh, you know it, it was, uh, back in the days, I was doing drug counseling, and I pointed it out. It's probably, it's probably, probably reason why uh, I didn't get along with some of my uh, coworkers. I pointed out, like, like reason why, reason, reason why this is such a such a strong issue right now, and we got to do something about this 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 drug issue right now is because it's a white issue. Like, yeah. Like, what about the drug epidemic of the eighties? <laughs> For nineties like, and and like, the seventies, like, like, that, right? The seventies too. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about the seventies when it really so, was a big thing right. when they was coming home from Vietnam. Right. Let's go back further than that. You know, it's it's always well, been an yeah. issue, and I'm glad you said that because the church was a big was monumental in our in our communities, and the church was our sounding uh, was our grounding, and there were still black psychologists. They were still black therapists. It was just that when you go to the church, the church was a minister. They, the, your minister, your church was your uh, support. So now yeah. what happened, the language changed, you know, things have changed because there was a movement of something happened and we start, and, I, it, and it's like we started getting disconnected from the source. We got, we got divinely disconnected. And we start looking at you know, instead of going to the pre, instead of going to a mental health therapist, we're gonna go to the preacher. You know, you know, we're gonna talk to them, and and, and it's it's okay to go to them, but they also are they're the backbone of the um of the community. They're not the they're not the source. You know, they're not the ones you go to for our mental health. You know, you go there. You know, everything ain't a demon. You know, you're absolutely right. There are some people in the household that's molesting a child. You know, you you know, there's so many things that go on that is not always church, but your church always was that backbone to give you give families the support that they needed. That's what the civil rights movement was. Right. We didn't pray the civil rights yeah, yeah, movement yeah. away. <laughs> we didn't pray. We didn't pray discrimination away. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's we we get away from we get away from these issues because we replaced it to keep us our mind off of it. That's how I see it. That's only my opinion too. But that, I think we take our mind off of it. And I think it's very important that people know how important it is to get your mental faculties together. You're talking to somebody that committed, tried to commit suicide three times. The third time, I, 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 I didn't, of course, I'm here. But I had to go through this cycle because I wanted to be a life coach. And, and basically, they had to show me like, oh, okay, you want to help people? First, let's help you. And the church didn't help me out of that. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't the church that helped me out of that. I had to seek therapy and sit and work every, all the issues out. So this is why it's very important that people know that you're here, that you offer these services. So your services, are you, um, is it just you offering services? Do Is there, how can I put For this? now. Uh, for, for now, okay. Yeah, I, I operate under an agency. Yep, I operate okay. under an agency. Um, I have my temp license. 
I'm actually finishing up my license. I, I just completed all my clinical work. Okay. So I'm, about, I'm about to finish taking my exam um, okay. in, in July, hopefully. Um, and so I currently work on our agency. The, the goal is to go independent. Um, the goal is to establish my own agency and sort of yeah. mentor your mental health professional. I've been doing I've been doing mental health for like the last ten years. Like, yeah. I, but I just I've been doing it I've been do, I've been doing it part 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 time while I was working, taking care of my family. Okay. Like, I just happen to be you know doing entrepreneurial stuff. You know, you know, do my real estate stuff. So it's 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 been something. Talk talk about when you talk about entrepreneur. You know, talk about being consistent. You know, and and not you know and not deviating and saying this is what I want to do. I'm gonna play it all all the way. To the end that's sort of how i play things out with my mental health so so yeah mm-hmm. I, I work on i currently work on the agency i work on the new site right now um we're housed out of des moines but i do telehealth so i can do telehealth anywhere um so uh so yeah i mean if, if folks need the support or if you need resources there, there are plenty of resources in the community or sometimes people get stuck you know i don't know what this you know you know my, my heart goes out to parents particularly african-american parents in the debut community yes, yes. i've seen i've seen some atrocities take place where they're, they're quick to put young African-American, uh, in, in particular men, on medication uh, and diagnose them with ADHD when they really are, have PTSD <laughs> from their environment. <laughs> yeah. But because they because because the school has attached DHS and other, other, other types of services to, to pin the parents against the wall, the parents, all, the, you know, parents, you know, at, you know, beneath a certain poverty level almost forced to to say, okay, whatever it takes for him not to behave Why? without really Why? identifying the root issues of Why? the behavior. And I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not giving any diss to anybody in, you know, in the, the mental health area in Dubuque. I just, I, you know, when you, when you talk about mental health and diagnosis, diagnosis is a snapshot. You take, you you know, you, you if you have a, if you have a physical issue, let alone a mental health issue, you got a physical issue, you take it to two or three doctors, you start to get two or three opinions mm-hmm. or two or three diagnoses. Depending on depending on depending on how uh, depending on on how how uh, I don't know how to say it depending on how how well the symptoms show if that makes any yeah. sense yeah yeah so it's yeah. Not, it, it, you know there, there there's air I'm just, I'm just you know give and take not not to give any diss against anybody but in a predominantly white society where you know people might not be as culturally aware right it is not, it and, and and diagnosis and diagnosis is a snapshot it's not accurate. It's not an accurate testimony. You take a snapshot, and then you look, and then you look at those symptoms over time, and you see whether those those symptoms change or become become decrease or become more severe, or or they look like something else. And then you and then you may give another diagnosis. It's not uncommon to give somebody multiple diagnoses, you know, depending on what you see, or to say that I thought I did, they they initially had it. They, we initially took a snapshot of their symptoms, and I initially saw symptoms that look like this, but it no longer looks like that. It looks like this. That's not right. uncommon. I don't, you know, that doesn't, that doesn't, that, 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 you know, that doesn't necessarily, necessarily mean that they're not being treated because, right. you know, diagnosing somebody and treating something and, and giving and treating symptoms is two totally different things because yeah. you can have a general treatment that covers multiple, that covers multiple, um, diagnosis, if that makes any sense. You yes. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you talk, you talk about, you talk, you talk about, you talk, you talk about either you go down the list, REBT, C, you know, CBT is classical you know <laughs> yeah the go yeah. to for a lot of for a lot of therapists who don't want to get sued <laughs> right right um right um so you know so but but going back to the point you know I, my heart goes out to parents who are uh, parents african american parents in in in, in predominantly white communities and and, and, and and my 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 suggestion my my suggestion would be for any parent that you know, that may be feeling that they may feel like they're put in a corner and 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 and, and social services has kicked in and, and, and a counselor has given a counselor psychiatrist or therapist has um given them a diagnosis of something to get a second opinion. I just I just gave advice to that to a Caucasian female. Mm-hmm. She was like, she's like, it's like I it's like I, I don't I don't think my son should be taking all this medication. I was like, ain't no wrong getting a second opinion. Yeah. <laughs> go, yeah. Go get a, you know, and make sure that what what you what what, what they're seeing is what they're seeing. Yeah, <laughs> you know, nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong and with that. The strongest opinion. Absolutely. <laughs> so, so absolutely. I'm, I'm out here. Yeah. If, if somebody needs to be, if somebody needs pointing in direction, I've, I've got plenty of colleagues out here. I network Good. consistently, constantly. 
I got plenty of people out here in the community. And I know plenty of people out in the community. Mental health therapists in Dubuque, or you know, in in, in, in the region. I've networked pretty well across the, uh, in in the in the in, in the Iowa area right between Good. here and Des Moines. I, I, I've I've networked pretty well. You know, okay. if, if if somebody needs something, they can always send me a message. And if and if okay. I don't, if I can't help them, I can I can I can point them in the right direction. Okay, yeah. so I'm going to ask you for your links in uh, in a few minutes. So I do have a couple. I have a comment, and then I'm gonna ha- I have a question. Antonio Milzan, yeah. he said you. Yeah. He said, um, quote, he's a huge reason why I created Mindset Nutrition. He really appreciates you, Larry. That's Antonio. And now is a question. The question is, well, Antonio. Here's, uh, what drives you and what's your mission? Um, it, it's very selfish, first of all. <laughs> and Tony, this is, <laughs> me and Antonio are alike and different in, in a lot of ways. So, 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 so I'm, I'm, I'm tickled that Antonio's asking this question here. <laughs> Antonio, I love you, brother. You're my brother. <laughs> I love you. I, pre- I, pre- I, appreciate the, I appreciate the gratitude and, and acknowledgement. Um, what drives what, what uh you, was the question was what drives me what, what drives yeah, what me drives and what's my you mission? And, and what's your mission um the thing that drives me as as a mental health but not just a mental health professional but an entrepreneur a person who 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 still likes to get it who still likes to give advice in the community like i'm always gonna reach out to people like antonio or anybody else i do it all the time but i just i just i just keep it covert um uh the thing the thing that drives me is to be able to do to be able to help people within my own freedom. Like I'm a big fan of autonomy. Like I'm, I'm, I am, I am a, I am a serial entrepreneur at heart and I love autonomy. I love the ability to create and do things um, and not be locked into, you know, you know, it, it's always been my dream to work for myself <laughs> in some type of capacity. And I get that from my daddy. So I blame my dad for that one. But to be able to function in the community and to help people in the community with a certain level of freedom and autonomy, to be controlling my time, those are the things that um, those are the things that 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 mean the most to me right now, especially as especially as it relates to me having a family and wanting the flexibility to, to be yeah. able to maneuver how I want to, which is the reason why I got into real estate and which is which is one of the reasons why I chose the mental health profession, particularly mental health counselors <laughs> as, yeah. as a profession, because I knew it would give me the autonomy that I, and flexibility that I needed down the road. So, and it's Absolutely. paid off pretty well, even in the event of the coronavirus. Mm-hmm. Um, my mission, my mission is just, my, my mission is just to be a light to people. I'll be honest with you. I, I don't, you know, it's like, you know, however the Lord can use me to be a light. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not dependent on what, on the effects of it, but whatever, Whatever, if whatever God, you know, whatever seed God tells me to plant, that's what I want to plant, and that's my mission. Uh, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm here to plant seeds. You know, I might not have to be the one to water or grow it or cause or or or, put, or or bear the fruit from it or pull the fruit from it and give it to my. You know, it's it's like that Tupac quote. There's the Tupac quote that represents me to my core. He says, "I may not be the one to what do you say? He says, I may not not be the one to to change the world, but I will spark the mind that will." Mm-hmm. And I think that that's so. For me, that for me as a mental health counselor, that's all I'm trying to do. I'm just that's trying to fun. spark your mind in the right direction, so I can just, you know, I don't, I don't think I'm going to be the major influencer, and I definitely think that God is the major influencer, and God is using me to help people. But if I can be used to spark the mind to overcome your mental health, to to think differently about entrepreneurship, to think differently about Black community and Black and, and involvement and helping your people, if I can be that spark in the community. You know, I, I I do that for free. That, that, you know, when we talk about your mission, your mission is that thing you would do without getting paid. You get what I'm saying? Like you, you do instantly. Instantly, some a young African American female or male who's got some oomph, who's got that ambitious effort, they can only be asking questions. Hands down, I'm gonna take out some time. And if I got time right there, I will make time. And if they really, you know, and I've, I've done this with people, I just I just don't I just don't tell nobody. If right. a person and and, and Antonio know and Antonio knows on the real deal. He said, if, if if you tell me and you got the energy and you, and you got that can do attitude, man, I will spend I will spend days and nights with you to help you accomplish your goals because I see the energy. And, I, and if I if I feel like I can tr- contribute to that and push you into where God has placed you to be and, you know, however I can be used, man, I get excited about that. That, that, that at my core gets me excited the most. That's what I love about mental health. Is just being, you know, especially those moments when there that light snaps in that person's head and they get it, and there's that change that you know obviously happens through 
me again sparking, planting the seed, and then God doing the rest. So, I, well, I, I know that was a long, that was a long winded. You, no, you can find out my perfect. mission on my website. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get that from you, you too. www.j4bg.org. Uh huh. And thank you for that. You find out my mission right there. I That's I right. The right place. Like. That's right. But I think I think it's better to hear it than, you know, sometimes you can oh, yeah. have it written oh, yeah. down, but it's good to hear it. But I love that Absolutely. you do that because that's <clears> one <throat> thing that I do agree about. Mentorship don't always, you don't always have to pay me. Like I would like I do coaching. I do life coaching and I work with therapists. I don't I'm not in place of your therapist. I'm working with your therapist, you know what I mean? So I am the one to give you a right. game plan, like, okay, this is A, B, and C. But what I've noticed traditionally, some people like to unload and not do the work. So that's part of that, that's part of that, um, that that therapy that mental health thing you know what i'm saying so i think it is very important that you are doing what you're doing because i love that as well i love the fact that people take time out of their day you know why because that's what we do if you especially if you're blessed with it and somebody took time out with you of course you're going to do it so i think that is good and that's very yeah. valuable very yeah, there's, valuable. A, there's, a bible verse, there's a bible verse attached to that to whom much is given much is required yes you know and i'm a product of mentorship I'm a pro I was I was raised under strong black men, engineers, lawyers, accountants. I was raised in a, a black church that had strong black men. And you, you know, and so there is a duty to pass that on to other people. It is it is my duty to to when when, when people like Antonio or whether it be Tim Wall or any other any of the young cats that are really that are really I'm really proud of and that's doing doing great things in the community, you know, it is it is my duty to 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 be a resource to them. Because somebody did it for me. Everything that I got, every all that I am, I, I you know, it came from it came, I, you know, I, I can say for myself, it came from it came from black men, you know, in particular, and my black yeah. mom, and my and my, and my mama, and, yeah, and and there was one other dude, uh, <laughs> but 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 a lot of my influence, a lot of my influence came from black men, and it and it and it's and, and I, it's my it, that that's the mantle that we have again. To whom much is given, much is required. That's our tithe. That's that's our tithe to God. Our tithe of time. You know, it's just giving back what we, what we've been given from God from other people. So that's yep. right. That's right. That's all. That's powerful. I'm glad you said that. Antonio did say yes. That's fact. He said you made time for him. So yeah, he said that is true. He can attest to that. Um, <laughs> <I> check it. <laughs> uh, yeah. He said, and this is what I and this see this another thing. This is another thing. <laughs> that must be an inside joke. Um, this is another thing I do love. <laughs> This is one thing I do love, and we got to go. So this is the thing I do yeah. love about this, uh, because you did, you brought up a point, what you grew up seeing. And I told someone the same thing. See, a lot of a lot of Black people grew, that went to school and grew up in neighborhoods, they did not, they did, they weren't afforded it uh, to see Black professionals. I grew up in Black middle class, so I, I had Black teachers. But I have, you know, I had black, you know, I had black professionals. There's people in our in our family that own things. So I know you've seen it, and but a lot of people don't see that. So it's almost like it, it's a disconnect again. We go back to that word disconnect. So here, now, last thought: What do you see, Dubuque, or any other place that you decide you might move to in the next ten years? What is your commitment to ensure that a child that is now entering school and may not have the support that he need, what what would you say that you would like to see other people to to take on and do? So it ain't just you just doing it. But what do you what kind of help do you need from your community? That's basically what I'm asking. What do you need from us? I I don't I don't know that I have I don't know that I have a, a strong answer to that. Okay. Because 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 efforts are being made. I mean, they got you got Black Men's Coalition. There are people, you know. I mean, um, what you call from luxurious? She had the luxurious hair group. Uh, what's her name? Uh, uh Shamika. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, Shamika. You know, Shamika. And and I know her name by the way. I talk to her all the time. I know. I, I, I know you do. I say you. But, do. I know you um, do. <laughs> but, but 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 there are people there are people in our community doing things all the time and you know there's 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 a uh, there's a proverb ish like saying that says that our our con our contributions to society is like a spoon is like taking taking a spoon and and you know trying to empty the ocean with a spoon 
Like there's only so much people can do. And we we only gonna do what what we only gonna do what God gives us provision to do, and then God's gonna do His work on the back end. So I keep yeah. that in context when I'm when we're talking about the needs, what 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 we need per se. Because I think okay. people, you know, uh, I I would argue that people there there are people that are already doing things in the community. I mean, Dubuque in particular has is 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 a very what do they call it? They have a huge they have, they, they have I believe statistically they have a huge. Um, what do they call it? Not, the non-for-profit funding that comes through the Dubuque community is very large. That's it true. Used to be. It used to, they used to be known for it, and and and, it, and it's different. Than, it's different than a lot of a lot of other areas. So uh, we keep that in context that there's already support there. You got the St. Mark. You got you got the Dream Center. There are, there are plenty of moving pieces around the community. We're all trying to do our our part, and yes, we could do better, and yes, we could make all the additional support. You know, I do I do my thing, and one of the things that I encourage people to do is is you plant your own energy, and you get you get so excited and committed to it that you you evoke other people to want to get involved. And I think you know I used I used to be that type of person that complained about people not getting involved, but that energy the 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 it, the getting people to want to do things with you to help the community and getting people to want to do things in the community. That is a energy that is your each individual. When you see the need, it is your responsibility to spark that need, That's to spark true. that energy. And if people don't respond to it, it means that it means that we have to do a better job as far as sparking the energy. I, it is an entrepreneurial effort to yield results and the hustle to find out how to get people to get excited about the things that we're excited about to, to get involved. There's plenty of people doing multiple things for different people. You got you got a, you got a thousand thousand different missions. Of people, you know, people with a thousand different missions in the view. Everybody doing mm -hmm. something different. And I used to think there was something wrong with that, but you know, there is nothing wrong. It with ain't everybody doing their own thing and trying to solicit support to get people. If you if you can get a thousand people to do it, why am I gonna complain when I can only get ten people to do my stuff? <laughs> do your thing. <laughs> Even if we're doing the exact same thing, right? Do it because you clearly are doing it better than I am. You know, I you know, not getting caught up in that. And to and to lend energy to people when you can, but yeah. not. But oftentimes people don't want to lend energy because they lend too much energy. But if you lend, if you lend the right amount of energy to people, where it's not taken away from you, you don't feel the blunt of something being taken from you with with consequence. If that makes any yeah. sense. And that's yeah. that's the that's the secondary thing I encourage is to give within the measure a proper measurement. A lot of people get involved with stuff and then they get mad and they, got, they have all these fats out because they gave too much energy. No, no, they did too much, measure, right. You have a measure of energy where it doesn't take away from you. Yeah. You know, and if, and if people would do give the measure of energy that doesn't take away from them, as, as, the, as the African proverb says, many hands make light. So you, should, you know, you know, the, the, the encouragement is to give out, give, give out that little bit of energy knowing that if you, if I give out a little bit of energy, somebody else gives out a little bit of energy. Somebody else gives out a little, a little bit of energy that is going to create a larger work. Mm -hmm. And that's the, that's mm -hmm. the part that may be missing in our in, in our community in, in general is people think it takes too much effort. No, no, no. It sometimes just takes me present. You know, I think I'm actively involved with uh, a Shamika, Shamika and her business. I'm present. I make sure I go down and see and say hello to her. She, she's, yeah. she's a person, when I get down there, I'm on a mission to say hi to her and be present with her. But it is me lending a hand of emotional support to her, whether she realizes it or not. She probably yeah. laughing at it like, yeah, right. No, I'm, 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 in, I'm intentful <laughs> about about lending emotional support. And every now, every now, <laughs> every now and then, I had to put, I, I'm, I'm putting some buckets to my, I'm putting, some, putting my money where my mouth is. And I'm supporting Good. her on her mm -hmm. mission to yeah. uh, to create substance. Not, not not that there's any brag or anything like that. But what I'm telling what I'm saying is this little things that we can do is just go down to go down to people where, where people got establishments and go give you a little five dollar. Go give you a little dollar. Even if you give something. Give, right. Give, little, give something. You know, give a little offering. I, sometimes I go down, you know, I'm I'm saying this just as an example. Sometimes I go down to Shamika and I just give her a little bit of an offering to myself. Like man, mm -hmm. don't don't treat you know I I won't I'm not, I don't say too much about that. But right. I, but 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 I, it's just example that we don't have to do a lot. It, I ain't doing nothing. I ain't doing, I ain't doing nothing but just throwing a little love and patronism. But you know, those folks they go out. It's people like Shamika. Yeah, I give credit to Shamika, Antonio in particular, who are, who who are very who very have a strong, very strong entrepreneurial presence in the community. They go day in and day out, and they give out positive energy day in day out, and they go out there and hustle for their money and and influence people at the same time. If I was to give two people that I'm really proud of in the community, it would be Shamika and Antonio. I think they cool. go out there, 
they sustain themselves in helping people. They, they do sustain themselves and how they, you know, and and and, and, and you know, and, and be, you know, and you got to give them credit where credit is due. And we, That's and true. you know, and if everybody would just go down there and just say hello, and give, you know, if, if you got a hundred, you get a hundred African Americans in there, they just go down and give a dollar to these institutions like Antonio, Jamaica. They got a hundred dollars a month, right? Come here from you know. For the support. Oh, cash it, it you know, not even that, it, just cash know, that, 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 that's the biggest takeaway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You can hey, cash that hey, too. Cash you know. Hey, everybody that everybody, every everybody that every, everybody every, everybody that's got every, Shamika. I'm, I'm gonna put Antonio and Shamika out there just as an example. Shamika okay. and Antonio, if y'all listen to this cash, put your, put your, put y'all put y'all cash apps out there. And I want everybody who's listening to this to send them a dollar. They have done so much in our community. Send them a dollar so show appreciation. Maybe send them five dollars. Do that as an example of saying that I got something from this 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 recording. Give okay. them that. Because that because that's what it's all about. It's about us, this is about us supporting us before we go out of business. Absolutely. You know, we don't want nobody to go out of business. We want to support each other and show love. And it don't take a lot. It that's don't right. take a lot. That's the biggest misconception about, you know, a lot of people keep they keep their little old pennies to themselves because they think it takes a lot. No, it don't. Yeah, that's $1. right. I want everybody to get one dollar. Anybody, one dollar to these institutions here because they 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 are doing their thing in the community. They, they, they have sustained themselves in the community for the last four or five years. I know this for facts. Yeah. Facts. Absolutely. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm proud of them. Absolutely. So, there you go. I, I I am too, and I and I love that because uh, we got here seven years ago, and um, yeah, coming here and trying to find a job for one. Uh, it was hard for me to do that. It was hard for me to do that because of my profession. Then on, on for two, I had just I was a coach, so nobody was looking for life coaches in Dubuque yet, you know. Uh, so I was still doing a lot of online stuff. But my husband, he started. He had his music studio. He got a studio mm -hmm. in Plainfield. He came here and did the same, you know. And it's the same thing. So I'm very, I I love the fact that they can sustain themselves in the midst of this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Any entrepreneur that's uh, sustaining themselves in the midst of this, I my hat's off to you. And I concur yeah. with Larry. Anybody? So uh, Antonio and Shamika, you all, we're gonna um, I'm gonna put this back up on YouTube as well as uh, repost it in groups. I'm gonna edit it. And I'm gonna add some stuff to it. But I I want uh, cash apps so we can flash them on the screen so everybody can see the cash apps to you uh to shamika and antonio so those that are looking to uh support a business in the community please do so also before we get off of here i do want you to talk about the black wall street uh you have a you have you start gathering data for your black wall street yep um so it it, it, it is it is it is a labor of love that Black Wall Street has been edited probably about two or three years ago. It's, been a, labor, it's a labor of love. Um, and as, as I'm growing as an entrepreneur, as I'm looking to make sure that my, you know, the, the key behind Black Wall Street is, is how do we retain the Black dollar in the community? And that, that, that was the sole focus, the sole, sole purpose of it is, 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 how, is how do we, you know, it, how, do I, how do I market my brothers and sisters? How do we retain the Black dollar in the community? Um, it is, it is pseudo-active. I go and I tinker with it. I look for active engagement, but I haven't, I haven't, I haven't majorly hit it. I, I throw it, I throw it out there every now and then to say, hey, I, you know, because in my per, in my personal arena of real estate, I'm looking for black lawyers. I'm looking for black accountants. I'm looking for black electricians. I'm looking for black plumbers. Like I want, I, you know, because I know I'm gonna need their support. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you know, for what I, for what I'm trying to do for my life and my family. Mm -hmm. and, and 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 you know, and if if we gonna if we gonna spend our money on these resources, why not our brothers and sisters? <laughs> Absolutely. You know, you know, there's there's so few of us in these industries. So the goal of Black Wall Street is, is to not only network with those who are already in the industries, but hopefully down the road to promote these industries because these industries will stand the test of time. When you talk about a plumber or an electrician, when you talk about a construction person, that, and that ain't going nowhere no time soon. <laughs> right. um, um, black accountants, black lawyers, black insurance providers, black bankers. Like, not, that, not, not, that, not that I'm trying to be all you know, you know, you know, don't support white folks. Some, there, there's, there's, some, there's some white folks that I do business with, man, I wouldn't trade it for, I wouldn't trade it for the world. They are, they, they, they've done better business with me than some black folks. And I, and I, I'll retain my, my services with them. But right. as, as it relates to, as it relates to how we 
help each other and build and, and build based off of the dis disparity in these areas. It's such a huge disparity. And and, it, and there's so much racism in these, in, there's so much racism, covert racism in these industries <laughs> that we need, we, we, we need to, we need to connect with people based off of a common, common thread, which is, which is, which is, which is our skin color and our, our desire to make each other better. So that's, that's, that's the purpose of Black Wall Street. I, I want, I want to connect with people that want to help, again, retain the, the, the dollar in the Black community. You know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not fully committed to that perp, to that to that theme there. I, I spend money at Walmart just like anybody else. You know, right. I, you know, I just, but I just spend money at a is, fast food restaurant. Right, and it's still, it's still it's something. something to it's, think about. It's, it's, it's a foundation to, yeah. so we'll know who's whom in the area. So I, yep, and not so. just, I, 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 I totally get that. I totally understand that. And it's not that, because see, people underestimate black business. Black business is not solely for black people. It's just that it's black owned. It's African-American owned. We want, we are in the community. We patronize everybody. And that's why I told someone I, I do social media management. That's why I'm pursuing more so now than coaching. Uh, but it, that goes in that because there are some people that don't know anything about what they need to do as far as being a creative professional. So that is one of the things that I started doing. So that I told get that you know please hear us like black wall street is mainly like your website is mainly for people to know that this minority no no not not a minority but we're black owned but we service the community and we're not just servicing black folks we service everybody you know right we, all money spends the same we are in a community that is supporting that the dollars support the place we live in because it supports schools it supports mm -hmm. everything we supports the property we live in, you know, so this is the type of thing is the education that a lot of people are not understanding when they see this. Thank you, Antonio. So T Antonio gave his uh, cash shop. I get Shamika's later and I'm going to put it on here. So thank you so much. So once again, you guys thank you. We, we run over a little bit, but I, I enjoyed this. I want to talk to you again offline because I'm working on something for it later on this year and I need you. Uh, so I'm going to need you to so, so I will be talking. It's a lot of it's a lot of folks. So, thank you once again, Larry, for uh, for you know, sharing your wealth of information. Thank you for taking time out on your busy schedule. I really appreciate it. Uh, we didn't talk much about your real estate, but you have real you you went to real estate. I see you uh, had apartments for rent. Uh, you did. Do you have anything else available? If they do, they can go to your website, right? They go. They, they go to my website. I'm I'm, I'm, all, I'm always selling. But, uh, okay. but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but I, yeah, <laughs> I, um, but, but I, I, I did want to throw out there. If you, if you want to know a little bit about real estate, I am, I, I, I did put out a post out there. I am encouraging folks to, to, uh, to, to, to hit me up and see whether we can do a little group chat. I can just tell you some stuff that I know about, about, about real estate. So we'll yeah. definitely do that. that too. We'll definitely do that. So, uh, once we're done, uh, we're going to uh, yeah, get off. I'm gonna be offline. I'm gonna send you uh, send me your links. Tell everybody again before we get off of here. What is your website? So how they can find you, and can you give the website to the Wall uh, to the Black Wall Street? Yeah, uh, the, the website for, uh, for for my mental health in particular, or if you want to look at it, see my property, what, what property I got available is www.j4bg.org. So it's J number four B is a boy G is a girl dot org. And you can see pretty much everything that I'm doing, that I'm currently, that I'm currently doing right now. That's awesome. pretty much my portfolio online. Um, the uh, the other one is Black Walls, B L A C K W A L S dot org. Um, if you want to put your business on there, or update your business information, um, or if you want to do anything special on that site, I'm trying. I, you know, at some point when I have free time, I want to turn that site into a big marketing platform for the Midwest. That's that's that's, that's my vision. You know, talk talk about entrepreneurship and having a, having a, having a strong vision and sticking to it. You know, I planted mm -hmm. the seed by by creating a website, and then every and then I use that, that I use that link to say, hey, I'm trying to connect. Here's what I produce. At let's see where we can all add to it. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. There's that as well. Thank yeah. you so much. And we, I want to talk to you about that too. Cause like I said, I do social media management. If you need someone to help you maintain that website, we're gonna talk about. You know, hit me up, get at me. Um, we we'll see because I do. I sit at the computer a lot. Yeah. I manage websites for a lot of people and social media as well. So if you see me, if you see some pages on Facebook, nine times out of ten, if I'm I'm managing them, that's me talking. That's not the actual yeah. business anyway. So I do want to thank you once again. Thank you guys for uh, tuning in. Thank you, Antonio. Thank you, Beth. 
um, Angie Stone, Kanisha, uh, Dr. Sherlon uh, Valencia, Leah Smith, thank you. Nick Durr, thank you all so much. So thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode of Great People to Know, one-on-one with Goldie. Until next week, I will see you all again. Thank you so much again, Larry. I really appreciate it. You have no idea how awesome this ep- how awesome this was. So thank you so much again. Yeah. I appreciate yeah, it. All praise to God, man. Yeah. Thank you for letting Thanks for having me. Thank you so yep. much. Have a good day. Yep. Have a good night. Thank you. you all too, right. You Bye now. Peace. Peace. Now I'm gonna look awkward trying to get off this Facebook live here. Oh, go ahead. Hold on a second. Oh, hold on, I'm trying to stop it. <laughs> <laughs>